Mikhail is a Minnesota pork shop owner and TikTok creator. Earlier this autumn, he posted videos based on an album of photos taken during Imperial Japanese Army massacres in China during World War II. Kel's videos went viral, garnering over 51.6 million views on TikTok. This led to threats against him and his business, and he has worn a bulletproof vest ever since. How did he get the photo album? Why did he decide to post videos online and share the stories? How much does he know about the related history? What happened to the album, and did it find an appropriate home? Today, Evan Kel is my guest. Hello, Evan. Thank you so much for taking the interview and share your stories. Nice to have you, and thank you so much for taking this kind of like interview. So, I would like to you to have a like short、uh, self introduction first. My name is Evan Kale. I am 33 years old. I live in Minnesota, in the United States. I am the owner of St. Louis Park Gold and Silver.、Uh, I am the internet personality known as Pawn Man. We don't do pawn here. It's just a name. Pawn is a thing in America <laughs> where you can, if you have an object you want to get a loan for, you can turn it into someone like me. And it's、uh, basically, I'll give you a loan for your stuff. But I don't do that. I just buy and sell. So most of what I do is gold and silver coins and currency. But I also do collectibles and I do history. And the products that I make for the internet, the videos have a lot to do with history. I think it's back in September. Mm -hmm. And that was really a buzz. You created a really a buzz here in China, actually. Yeah. Because I, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> because of the album, like as a Chinese, that we are really interested in the content of, of the album. Can you please、uh, tell us, and or can you still remember the day you got the album? It、yeah. was so. Part of what I do with my videos is I, I had. I built my entire business on social media.、Uh, a big part of what I do is selling product using videos and having people mail me stuff where I can buy it and turn around and sell it. So you know, I get all kinds of stuff advertised to me, and I have a lot of followers. I had before all this craziness, I had a quarter million followers. It's it's not a small number. So I get all kinds、mm -hmm. of stuff, you know, every time. And so this customer reached out to me in early August and said. I have a book of photos from World War II. They are disturbing, and I thought, well, you know, I see all kinds of stuff from World War II. It's all disturbing, and I, you know, I just didn't really think anything of it. He sent it to me, and I got it the last Monday in August. I think it was August twenty、uh, ninth or eighth, and I, you know, when I signed for it, I did it because I get so much stuff sent to me. I didn't even remember saying yes to it. I was like, oh, what's this? And I opened it up, and oh yeah, a customer said he was going to send me this book of photos, and I, you know, I look at it's. The cover is very、uh, elaborate. It's this leather-bound cover with a dragon on it, and you start flipping through, and it's this guy in the war, and you know him and his sailors, sailor friends, and they're drinking and they're having fun and life in the military, and then life in you know Southeast Asia. But then, just a few pages into the book, there's savage photos of. Well, I saw the word Nanking, and I thought, oh my gosh, this might be photos from the Nanking massacre because I majored in Japanese studies in college. I know all about the Pacific Holocaust and. Just seeing the carnage in these photos, combined with、uh, just the word "nan," you know, I thought, "Oh my God, this this is something of great historical significance." I can't buy this. This might be expensive. I I don't want this to go in a private collection. This should go in a museum. So I made the video in question, and、um, well, lo and behold, here we are. Yeah. So who was the client? Do you have any the, ideas about the client? The yeah, the client、uh, has asked to remain anonymous because this is you know this got so crazy so fast. I. What ended up happening is I posted the video the next day, you know, just instantly blew up, and、yes. the next day I was just bombarded from everyone wanting to know, wanting answers, and I reached out to him that weekend and I said, "Look, this is getting crazy.、Uh, I don't know what to tell you, but we we need to figure something out here." And he said, "Like, I don't want any part of this. I I appreciate what you're doing, but like, this looks like a mess."、Uh, so I ended up paying him. I said, "Because this whole thing, after a week of this." It was how much is the book worth? Who's going to front the bill? And the whole question of what's it worth became it just is blood money to me. You know, this thing isn't doesn't belong in a private collection. I don't like assessing a dollar amount to it. And I was just getting crucified by the internet to do something. So I said, look, ugh, what? How much do you want? Like, let me just buy it from you so I can donate it because it needs to go somewhere. And if the longer we drag this out, the worse it's going to be for me. So I said, how's a thousand? Okay, okay. I paid him a thousand dollars, signed a contract with him. And then for his own, I said, "Look, it's the last time I'm going to contact you for your safety." So I deleted his number. I don't have any of his contact info anymore. 
Um, yeah, he and he's a family man. He didn't want any part of this mess. It got very scary. What was your first reaction when you saw the photos? When I got that book on Monday and I opened it up and I got beyond that page, I screamed. I, I had a loud verbal reaction. I had actually a family friend here um, just stop by to say hi. And, you know, I said, oh, hey, I just got this package, you know, and then I explained my, I call it remote deal program because like you remotely send me stuff. So I said, oh, this is my, I got a package for my remote deal program here. Let's check it out. And so I opened it in front of him. And as soon as we got to the violent photos, he just, he left. He couldn't make it all the way through. I couldn't make it all the way through. Uh, number one, I was just suddenly so overwhelmed. And I thought, oh my God, what did I sign up for? Like I, now I have to get this into a museum's hands. This is why it also took three days for me to make that video because I didn't know what to do. I thought, you know, okay, every time I reached out to a museum, they've never taken me seriously. And this is when I had a quarter million followers. So I thought, well, maybe if I make a video that's so sensational, I can finally capture a museum's attention. And yeah, I just, I wasn't counting on it being number one in Chinese social media. How much do you know about the history of the Sino-Japanese wars? Quite a bit. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a very dark chapter of human history. I mean, all of World War II is, but, you know, this predates uh, World War II, uh, the first Sino-Japanese war, and then again, the second one. Why you choose to study Japanese history, or why did you choose to study Asian histories? Okay, it is actually a very long and convoluted answer. I'm going to try and explain it as quick and easily as I can. I mm -hmm. have a love of Japanese culture, particularly through the cartoons. Um I, I love watching anime. I still do to this day. In fact, I, I was watching some last night. Um, and you can see here, I got these Japanese dividers here. I, I like Japanese culture and history and, and anime. I always have. When I was in college, I kept switching majors. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I started writing screenplays for fun, trying to get into Hollywood. And I thought, you know what I want to do? I want to get into this Hollywood thing. And you need to have a plan if you're going to try and break into an industry this hard. And I wanted to be the go-to guy to adapt Japanese cartoons into American big budget movies. So that's why I majored in Japanese studies. It was a very convoluted thing. It didn't work out. You know, I'm, the, I'm doing it. I run a gold business now. Uh, my whole twenties was chasing, trying to pursue writing and breaking into film and being a movie producer and a screen. And it just didn't work. But so that's why I majored in Japanese. I had a very convoluted plan to do something with it that ultimately nothing came of it. Glad I, glad I majored in it though. Why did you decide to post videos about the album? Because I, like I said, have never, um, let me rephrase that for you. I have never been able to capture a museum's attention. And I have had items that for sure belong in museums. Um, I've had items from the Holocaust, the German Holocaust advertised to me. And, you know, I don't traffic in those. I draw a line in that. I have, a, uh, I'll sell most things, but if it's involving a war crime, I won't sell that. That, that belongs in a museum. So this was something, as soon as I saw the photos of the violence and just the historical significance, like, God damn, look at all these photos this guy took. What struck me so much about uh, this album, not just the violent photos, but the nonviolent photos. In fact, one of the individuals I had uh, checked the book out before I donated it is a, I don't, I don't want to say his name. He's with Yale. He's very high up in the historical department. And I gave him permission to use the photos uh, for a paper he's writing, but not the violent ones the nonviolent ones, he said, they're just incredible. I can't believe the detail, the quality of the photos this guy took. Uh, but so I, I had never gotten a museum's attention. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to use social media to get someone's attention. If I scream loud enough, maybe someone will look. A lot, a lot of people looked. Did you ever like uh, think about the videos will cause a buzz online? I did um, because I am a, you know, my whole business revolves around social media. I am a professional influencer. I know how to make a product that is viewed. Every video I make, I make it to get viewed in one way or another. I just, I, as I said in, in other interviews, and I've said again and again, I assembled a perfect storm of words on an accident. I knew that I was putting together a product that was going to get interest. I just didn't count on this much interest. Where it gets messy and where it's still messy for me is, you know, it's not the photos of the rape in Nanking. I made a mistake, but it, in America here, it just turned into this big thing. Oh, it's a hoax. And so that is the negative connotation that is still surrounding it is my intentions and and was the whole thing a hoax or not. So, uh, you know, and, and people question my motives too with using social media. But the fact is, you know, I, I had never gotten anyone to call me back on stuff like this. And it's like, well, I have a customer's item. He wants something done with it. I got to do something. 
So that was my solution, how to do something. And, you know, had I not done that, China wouldn't have the book. Can you share some of the feedbacks that you got online, whether positive ones or negative ones? It's it's really a mix. It's overwhelmingly positive. Um, you know, I've had so many Chinese people reaching out to me, posting on my YouTube, my TikTok saying, thank you. I've gotten emails. I get, you know, just so many messages of outpouring. I, well, maybe it's because I can't read Mandarin. I haven't seen any Chinese person say you did a bad thing. Uh, it's all positive. Here in America, it's mostly positive. It's just, like I said, there's, you know, this got really scary for me really quick. And some of these allegations about my intentions were very, very negative. And like, I just had so many words put into my mouth and people making up assumptions about my intentions. And then they just decided to marry those and stick with them. So, you know, now that the story has a resolution, uh, people got so invested into what they thought that now they don't want to walk it back. You know, it's a very, it's an American thing. I guess maybe it's a world thing too, just with the internet and social media culture and being headstrong and not backing down and not admitting when you're wrong and not saying sorry. Um, I think people just, they got so invested in what they thought that now that they see that that's not the case, they're just going to double down. And that seems to be what's happening with my critics. But I mean, it is it is pretty funny on uh, uh, Twitter, people attacking me, like it's white people attacking me and then Chinese people are going after them. And it's like, you, you don't see the problem here? Yeah, there are people like fighting for you yeah, it's, under it's, the comments areas. It's, it's pretty, you know, and I try not to invest in comments and reading hate like this, like, you know, I've, I'm well versed in social media and have been for a while. This I've been making videos for a couple of years now. So I'm used to being attacked. I'm used to getting hate. I'm used to ignoring comments and not taking them seriously. But, uh, you know, some major, some very influential Americans with lots of followers made videos about me. And those that I wa I saw those because you know, people are sending them to me. Like, I'm not going to name names. One person in particular made a video that a lot of people were like, hey, have you seen this? So that I'd not, I've not had before where there's major American celebrities that are coming after me. Uh, that was scary. But you know what? I, I know I did the right thing here. Uh, I wouldn't have these letters of thanks or this national gift from China or all the support if I'd done a bad thing. And yeah, it, just, it's, it speaks negatively, I think, to the internet and just the culture we perpetuate and the hate machine that can be the internet. Yeah. So can you share some of the like comments or, or actions or moves that uh, you remember the most, whether the, the happy ones or the sad ones? The best, the best things that I remember was two days after I posted the video on Friday, I had so many Chinese people stopping by to hug me and cry and give me flour. It was just overwhelmingly powerful. Uh, that, I mean, that was the most just intense interaction I've had, the most positive interaction, the most like life-changing interaction. That's what convinced me so much that this belongs in China was these people stopping by saying, no matter what, thank you. The education you have provided here is so important to our history. Um, so those stood out to me the most as being just the most positive interactions. And like just, you know, some people on the internet uh, message me, some major influencers message me and said, I believe you, you're doing a good thing. Ride the storm out, just be strong. Yeah, so- I, I've heard that on, on like news. Uh, it said that you are, you worn like bulletproof West. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, for a couple of weeks. I mean, I was basically hiding in my apartment. I did. I was really afraid um, for a few reasons. Number one, the, again, just the, it was so negative. What was being said about me. It's like, God, I don't want to blow my head off too. Like that's a really, it, it, people were getting really outraged and angry. Uh, I had people messaging me on social media, my address. I don't know how they found it. Uh, I had a few people message me, you know, watch out. Nobody said, I'm going to kill you. I would have reported that. That didn't happen. Uh, but I did have, you know, threats, you know, people saying, watch out, sending me my address. That's pretty scary. And on top of that, I know enough to know that the worst of the worst crazies are the Nanking deniers. They are really dangerous, really aggressive. And so I, I was really worried about that group in particular. Um, I had... One individual show up, uh, somebody said he might be in a cult. I, I wrote the name down. I don't remember the name. One individual showed up and was definitely trying to hack into my Wi-Fi. I had to shut my store down and I, you know, I kicked him out and took a bunch of pictures outside. And then he took off in a, in a out of state plates uh, rental car. Uh, but that was very scary. So I, I had some just really, really bizarre stuff happen. Uh, and it, it got mm -hmm. alarming. And, you know, this is America. There's a lot of guns. There's a lot of crazy people. Uh, so I... 
I bought a bulletproof vest before the or when the pandemic hit in 2020. And it's like, well, I'm gonna get my money's worth on this thing. I wore it, I wore it for weeks. I'm not wearing it now because it's very uncomfortable. And I like I don't think I'm gonna get killed over this, but yeah, it is craziest month of my life. Um uh, my my mental health took quite a toll. I lost a lot of weight, I wasn't sleeping. Um yeah, just the 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 mental strain. You know, I was joking, I don't know how Donald Trump does it being in the media sphere like that and getting all that pressure. Cause I, you know, I, after a week, I was like, I want off this ride. After three days, I wanted off. How's life uh, these days? How's I'm your good. life? I'm okay now. Days? I'm a lot better now. I'm, I'll tell you, I'm looking for a therapist. I definitely need to see one. I, I yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just, I'm ready to move on. And, and, um, uh, you know, I get, I get recognized on public about this and, you know, people ask me about it. It's like, just, just ask me about something else. Yeah, I'm, it's almost the it's almost the new year here. It's almost the Chinese New Year as well, and it's just I'm very excited to have a new year and start a new year and move forward with my career and with my new Chinese audience and, and just all the great things I'm going to do next year. Um, this was the craziest year of my life by far, by far. Uh, uh, bingo list for 2022 didn't have any of the things that happened on it. <laughs> a lot of these comments you see that like one of my things is because I'm a writer and you know I have good education. If you make a spelling mistake and you're trying to make an argument on the internet, I just don't take it seriously. Cause it's like, you don't, you didn't even take the time to spell something properly. And the amount of people that are attacking you that are just spelling like idiots. It's like, well, pff, you sound smart. Do you regret sharing the stories on social media? No. Uh, this was, you know, the fact is I provided education simple as that. That's why I'm here. That's why I make content. I mean, I'm running a business, but I'm also, I love educating people. And that's why I'm making these videos. And that I accidentally educated millions of people about the Pacific Holocaust is so worth it to me. Even if I had to bear the brunt of, of all this crazy, sh all this craziness, um, it was, it was totally worth it. It's why I'm here. So I wouldn't do anything differently. I regret, here's what I do regret. And here's what I, I won't say apologies because I don't think I need to. But I regret giving anybody false hope that I might have photos of the Nanking massacre that might lead to justice. That I regret. Um, but everything else, it, you know, it's it's uh, how we got here. It's how I ended up educating again all these people about the Pacific Holocaust. So had I not done it, then it wouldn't have happened. The word Nanking is in there more than once, I will say. And so, you know, China has the book now. Chinese scholars are checking it out. I'm not sure where, how they're going to display it. Um, but I'm, I'm interested to see there. Cause the fact is I didn't really get anybody to check this thing out in person. Cause all the controversy, I had a bunch of people here in Minnesota lined up to come check it out. And they all blew me off when after the weekend of, oh, he's faking it. Nobody wanted their name attached to this thing. So I had some people digitally check it out. And then I had a few people with local museums come and like, look at it, but they weren't super duper experts and I couldn't get that much of an opinion. So I'm really interested to see what the Chinese scholars who look at it have to say. Um, there's a few photos in there. They're not violent, but there's a few propaganda photos in there that are probably unseen and they're pretty bad. Um, so I'm pretty interested to see if those turn out to be real. Um, and just kind of through and through what the overall findings are and how the book is going to be displayed. I, uh, I just donated the digital copy to the Texas Pacific War Museum here in the United States. I don't know how they're going to distributed i just um filled out a thing the other day and like any museum in the u.s is welcome to have the digital copy because china was kind enough to give it to me uh to keep to distribute for educational purposes you know I'm not, again i'm not making any money off of this thing i could have made millions of dollars off of this and i don't want to i don't want a dime um i'm just i'm trying i was trying to do something charitable with it uh i was trying to get a museum to host it for like 99 cents for a month and raise money but I just, because of the controversy, even still, I just couldn't get anyone to do it. So Texas Pacific War Museum has it. I don't know how they're going to distribute it. Any other American museum or any other museum, frankly, is welcome to ask me. And as long as it's a real museum, uh, I'm more than happy to donate it. The key is, even though I don't understand you, but you don't understand us, but we are brave enough to speak it out to say it, to communicate, mm -hmm. and then we can exchange ideas and then we can know more about different cultures and di different backgrounds. I have uh, had a few conversations with people saying that, you know, you you should be a peacekeeper. We should do something with, you know, I should have some kind of an official capacity. And I, I mean, I'm a private citizen, simple as that. I got to watch what I say and do here. Um, if I was asked, I would gladly do it. I think it'd be a privilege and an honor. But uh, right now, I think we have a moment with this. I've accidentally created a moment where young Chinese people and young American people are now seeing each other through the lens of social media through this. 
And that moment is very important because our, our countries right now are having some issues. And I am mm-hmm. I'm so anti-war. I'm so pro-peace. And any kind of a dialogue is constructive. So what we, you know, how we go about doing this, I don't know. It's not, it's above my pay grade, shall we say. But I'm happy to play any kind of a peacekeeping role I can. And I just think that this is an opportunity that we have here. And I hope we can continue it, continue dialogue and continue pursuing peace. I know that you gave the album to the Chinese consulate general in Chicago. And why did you make that decision? Were there any other options? And is there anyone like anyone want to buy it? Yeah, uh, actually, I had a lot of people the day the two days after the video, a number of people were calling me making me like very high dollar amount offers. And I was like, did you not see the video? I'm not selling it. And I had one guy I bet he called here eight or nine times, some weird guy named Merlin. And he kept offering me more money. And I was like, and he was like being very intimidating. And I was just like, I don't know what part about this you don't get. It is not for sale. And then he's like, well, how about I buy it from you? And I donate it to China. And I was just like, again, who the hell are you? Like, how did you even get my number? So yeah, just a lot of people came out of the woodwork uh, wanting to do different things. Uh, I got it to the consulate general, thanks to one individual who lives here in Minnesota. He is Chinese. He is now an American citizen. He is involved with the some local Chinese organizations here. And he uh, came here, I think came here on Friday, two days after the video. And, you know, he gave me his card and we talked. He said, if you want to give this to China, just let me know. So I got a lawyer that following Monday or Tuesday because, you know, I, I had to. This is I accidentally created an international incident. I'm a private citizen. I can get in a lot of trouble. So I, I went, I got a lawyer, a like very, very high profile one. And I'm sitting in his office. I also I walked into his office with a bulletproof vest with a gun. He's like, he looked at me like, God, who who did I just take as a client? But he said, What do you want to do with this? I said, I want to donate it to China. It's where it belongs. And like, I just want this whole mess behind me. I'm like a comedian. I'm funny. I, I have a lot of energy. That's why I do, you know, I'm so but this was a very serious, somber meeting, uh, very heavy. I had, you know, I mean, I was very humble to meet them. What really threw me, and I said this in a TikTok, when they gave me the gift. They didn't tell me what it was and I didn't ask for it. I didn't know I was getting anything. I didn't, I didn't ask for anything. Uh, it's not, I didn't give it to get something back. I gave it because I just thought it was the right thing to do. So they said, we, we, they gave me the letter. Okay, this is beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to frame this. I actually have uh, that letter and another letter from a gentleman in Hong Kong in the government framed right over here. Um, but then they said, we have a gift for you. It is very important. And they presented me with the national gift. And they didn't say, this is a national gift. We don't give this to most presidents. They just gave it to me. Mm-hmm. And, and they're very humble about it because of this, the the meeting. And, you know, again, they didn't embellish what it was. They didn't brag about it. They didn't explain it. They just gave it to me and said, it's it's important. Take care of it. So, you know, I took it home and I had it here in my store. And I made the video. I posted the video the day that I donated it to him because I've been filming stuff for a while. So I like I made a YouTube video about all this. And, you know, the video started the first day of the the uh, drama taking place. So I got I got home and I'm looking at the comments and I'm seeing people saying, do you know what they gave you? No, what they gave me? And then I found out what it was. And I, I came running here, Jessica, in the middle of the night. I got an Uber, came flying over here because I was worried somebody was going to steal it as soon as I, fe- like, because I didn't know. So I had to go and do all the, uh, having the book, keeping the book safe was some spy level stuff. I had friends trading it off in parking lots, no cell phone. I was so worried about it getting stolen. I, I basically had to do the same thing with this gift. And like, I had to elaborately get it out of the cities and get it into hiding. So it's, I'm, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Now I'm trying to uh, see if a local museum wants to house it. Cause I'm just, I'm really worried about it getting stolen. Um, yeah, yeah, incredible experience, but the meeting again, the meeting though, uh, life-changing. I'll never forget meeting, meeting them and, and having that experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw the the gift, the highest. It is considered. I do do my research as well because that is my first time seeing that as well. <laughs> yeah, so that is considered as the highest diplomatic gift possible for individuals from Chinese diplomats as a thank you. And normally that is given to. Can I get you to say that one more time? One sec. I just, 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 just for, I'm not going to keep going in circles about this, but just, just for me, we have Jessica here. Okay. So, big deal. And say that again, please. That is considered as the highest diplomatic gift possible for individuals from Chinese diplomats as a thank you. Thank you. Accredited journalist, Jessica from Beijing.
It's not from Amazon, is it? <laughs> it's not from Amazon. It's definitely not from Amazon. But it's, it, it, mm -hmm. it fries me, just fries me how stupid Americans are about this and these continued perpetuating controversies about me that are just like hurtful and not true. And like, I, I don't deserve this level of craziness. I really don't think I do. Mm -hmm. Um, there's there's conspiracy theories online that I hired crisis actors. The the people at the, from the consulate general they're not real. They're actors I found off the street. Uh, there's a conspiracy that because I wear this is from an anime from Mobile Suit Gundam. These this mm -hmm. is the logo of the bad guys. I love I love yeah, I love yeah. it since I was a kid. I like the bad guys. They're cool. People think I'm dog whistling that I've been the villain the whole time because I wear the bad guys logo. It's like oh my god. Just get a hobby, people. Read a book. Do something. Breathe. Like a, a thread. Like, you know, they must have put hours into it. And it's like, does your time mean nothing? Why you are? Why do you care so much? This is like definition of a waste of time. Can't I just can't believe that 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 was what was given to me. And more, they just how they gave it to me. They were so humble about it. I wish they would have told me. There is one comment. There is, there is one comment I would like to share with you that was in Chinese, uh, but I translated it as, you can, you can pass that proselyte down to your, your sons or your children. If they need help in the future, Chinese people will go all out for them. Yeah, I've heard it's, uh, uh, what do they call it? a blood metal is a, is a term I heard, like as in, uh, if I'm ever in danger, uh, China will take me and help me. So yeah, yeah. Let's hope I don't get in trouble. I don't have to cash that one in. <laughs> what will you do with this yellow sparkling pot? So I'm. I mean, I'll never sell it. You know, I've had people tell me I get millions of dollars for it, but it's it's not. You know, if I'm not going to make millions of dollars off this book, I'm not going to make millions of dollars off the gift that I get in, in return. It's mine forever, and I'm going to treasure it forever. Uh, again, I'd like to have a lo local museum here in Minnesota take it mainly for insurance purposes because i need to get it insured and appraised in case something happens to it and you know this it, again i hate putting a dollar amount on this thing but it is it is now the most valuable thing i own by far so i need to protect mm -hmm. it and i'd like to display it i can't display it in my store here i'm just i'm worried something's going to happen but i think a museum uh here in minnesota would be great because it it I mean, it, it speaks to what I did. It speaks to the education again about the whole thing. It continues to perpetuate the truth about the Pacific Holocaust. Uh, and in a museum, it'll be safe. Uh, I'm not worried about anything happening into it there versus, you know, my store or in my home, something could happen to it. So I want to put it on display in the public here. I just need to find a safe way to do that. Here are some comments that I've read on, on Chinese social media that I would like to share with you. Okay, there are several several comments. I do the the screenshots. Can you see that? Oh yeah, I can see. It. I I recognize that guy. Yeah, this is you. <laughs> this is you in a suit. I think yeah. it's for for the the consulate gen, yeah. general. Yeah, say I, I uh, hope all y'all picked up that I wore a red tie on purpose. Uh, I yeah yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the nice. It was like <laughs> I, I want to show them I care. How do I do that? Nice new red tie. Uh, all the first one, all Chinese people would like to say thank you to a justice minded foreigner. Respect. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second one, you are a friend to all 1.4 billion Chinese people. We're friends. Okay. <laughs> Third one, great thanks. We we'll welcome you and your family to China. You haven't met my parents yet. They want to go, but they're a handful. <laughs> Okay, the fourth one. This might be the only time that such a prestigious diplomatic gift was president uh, was presented to an individual. I have heard that one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that one blows me away. Apparently, Richard Nixon got one. You are. You might be the second one. The fifth one. Uh, he is a wise man with a professional history background. He is a man of love, regardless of nation. Have you ever visited China before? No, I'm not. I'm unfortunately not well traveled. I've only been outside the United States once. Um, I've never been to Asia at all. I never, I never went to Japan when I was studying Japanese. Um, I was, uh, to be honest, I was really afraid. Why to not? Fly until, like kind of recently. Oh, okay. My my uh, my father is very neurotic and has a like, terrible fear of flying. Uh, he hasn't left the state of Minnesota in like twenty some years. So he passed that on to me, and I now know that's a silly fear. And I can like I can fly and get on a plane. I just I really don't like it. 
So I try to travel a lot. I do love the travel. Um, I just, I don't go outside the United States. I've only been outside once, but again, I would love to come to China and I'm going to come next year at some point. What comes to your mind first when you think of China? The Great Wall. When I hear the word, that's the first thing, just instinctively when I think. And then, okay. and then second is Panda. I do, I sell coins and you know, the Chinese Panda, the silver uh, 10 yuan, I, I get a lot of those. I, tra I traffic in a lot of those. So I think of that too. Anything else? Um, I mean, as far as the politics of the country goes, look, I've never been there and I don't know what it's like to live there. So I can't really make up an assessment. You know, we have a slant here in America. It's not a very positive one right now because of the tensions between our countries. But uh, I mean, I don't even like American media. I listen to BBC News. That's that's the media, I, I, uh, Western media I subscribe to. So, you know, mm -hmm. if, if, as far as opinions about China go coming out of the United States, like in terms of what uh we all kind of think i try not to listen too much to it because who knows i haven't been there and i don't know and there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of negativity so if you have a chance maybe next year in 2023 uh you have a chance to visit china where would you like to go and what would you like to experience well i think the most important thing for me to do is to go to the nanking massacre museum in nanking see it see the museum uh, because I mean, that's how all this started. And I really do need to go there and, and, and see it firsthand, to drink it in and, and learn for myself. And, um, I just, I think that's the most constructive place for me to start where I go after that. I don't know, because I, I'm, I'm down to go anywhere in China. I'll go to the rural parts. I'll go to the urban parts. I'd love to go to Shanghai. I'd love to go to Hong Kong. Um, yeah, there's, I would be down to go anywhere in the country. Truly. Um, I think going to the rural parts would actually probably be more fun. I like, uh, getting into like weird adventures. And that, that sounds like a lot of fun. I love, uh, I, love I love Chinese food. Um, my, one of my favorite restaurants, it's in New York city in Queens. It's called alley 41. It's an award-winning restaurant. And I like going there because it's traditional Chinese dishes that are very, you know, to Americans, very exotic. I try things I've never had before, but just going in there and seeing that is so interesting to me. Um, I love experiencing different cultures so yeah, just through and through uh, going to China, I think would be a lot of fun. Uh, but the food, the food, I love Chinese food. I love uh, very exotic Chinese, or by my, by my standards, exotic, the weirder, the better. And I have a very adventuresome palate. I love spicy, like burn my tongue off spicy. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, definitely you can visit the southern part of China, like Sichuan, Chengdu, because of the spicy hot pot. So are there anything that you would like to say to Chinese netizens? I simply want to say thank you to all of China from the bottom of my heart for standing up for me, for having my back, and for continuing to support me and defend me uh, from when my intentions were called into question to the conclusion of this. Uh, the, the support has been overwhelming. It's what convinced me, the uh, well, a lot of things did, but it's part of what convinced me the book needed to go to China, and I'm just... So glad I did this and was able to make this connection with Chinese people, especially at a time now, like I said, where there's a lot of turbulence and it's good to have something positive and peaceful happen, something that creates a new dialogue, something that uh, de-escalates. And I really think that this was a de-escalation. You to, to use three words, to use three words to describe your 2022. What are the three words? Good question. Um, unexpected. I don't want to say stressed out, but... Um, overwhelming and joyous uh the the world the year was overwhelming uh it was immensely stressful i've never endured stress like this in my life the conclusion was joyous i've never felt this satisfied uh about anything ever um and just, i mean this whole year is just unforgettable through and through and through not just this experience uh leading up to it i mean i, I business wise this has been an incredible year too uh the store my store has uh, more than doubled in the last year. So it's it's just been an incredible journey. It's been a lot of work, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that this year turned out the way that it did. What are your plans in the future? Your plans for yourself and plans for the business? Uh, keep expanding, keep growing, um, keep uh, making content. Uh, here in America, I'm, my goal is I'm trying to get a TV show uh, with what I do because I basically on YouTube, I have my own TV show here um, where I film myself doing deals. I film myself educating people. I sit right here uh, and do like a, I call it a monologue where I explain something. I want to expand my store. I want to make this a much bigger store with more people working for me. 
I want to make it so that I can go to China for a month and not worry about my business. Uh, and that's kind of not a thing right now because we're just, we are working so hard here. You know, I work like 80 hours a week, truly. I work until, you know, I work 12 hour days and I go home and I keep working. I'm on social media. So mm -hmm. just expanding and make like setting this up. So it's not just me working like this. I got more people under me. That's my goal for my business. As far as my personal goals, uh, I want to get back into martial arts. I have a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. I was getting ready to take my fourth degree, which would make me a master. But then COVID happened. I haven't trained in about three years. Um, I would love to learn Kung Fu. Uh, I'm very into martial arts. I can't find anyone here in Minnesota to, to teach me. My dad is a black belt in Shaolin Kempo. And really? he, yeah, he was a professional fighter uh, in his early 20s in the 1970s. Um, so I would, I would like to learn that and expand my martial arts. Um, and yeah, just, you know, I love what I do. I'm very happy with what I do. I was, I was a waiter four years ago, uh, chasing the writing thing, coming up short and just very sad and depressed and dissatisfied with my life. And four years later, I am living a dream. I can't believe how well everything is going. I just, I can't wait to see where it goes. And just given the fact that if you asked me a year ago, what does 2022 look like? I for sure wouldn't have said any of this. I can't believe what's happened <laughs> over the last year so you know sky's the limit and we'll see what happens next year but it's it's bound to be interesting okay so that's all for my questions and thank you so much for sharing your stories and that was a really uh pleasant conversation and Absolutely. thank you so much you too.